Okay, going live. Going live, everybody. You're live. <laughs> okay, welcome, everybody. It is five o'clock in San Diego, and you know what that means. It means it's time to eat and drink. So welcome to our special Mother's Day edition, cheese and wine tasting, virtual tasting number seven. Um, so we'll wait a couple minutes for everyone to join us as Gina is showing the cheese plate here. And Miss we are live from downtown San Diego. Broadcasting from the studios of the AOC. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to explain your plates should all look like that. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all. Thank you for joining us, everybody. And while we're still getting set up and making sure we look good here. Who are you? <laughs> my name is Rob Graff, and I am the professor of cheese, the events coordinator here at Venissimo Cheese. And what's your name? I am Gina, the cheese whiz at Venissimo Cheese, and happy to be here with Professor McCheese. The cheesiest names ever. Ever. We are a cheese shop. It would be silly not to be cheesy, right? It would. Yeah. It would. But yeah. welcome. We've got, uh, we've got a really fun tasting for everybody tonight, and we're going to walk you through. And um, before we start, we want to make sure everybody is set up and situated. Um, take a moment to open your wines if you are not already two glasses in. Um, feel free. Go for it. Um, we have a uh, white Pinot Grigio, and we have a red Sangiovese. Uh, really, whatever you have at home, uh, feel free to open up and we can experiment and play around. Um, and we have a five cheese plate here. And uh, I was very careful this time and I made sure they were all set up in the same formation so there's no confusion. And uh, we're gonna taste in order and everybody should have a list of, of the cheeses on your lid. And it will be one, two, three across the top, okay? and then four or five across the bottom. And, and one looks like a little yeah. cube, right? One is like a chunked hard mm -hmm. cheese that looks like this. So that's where we're gonna start. Yes, um, to get your bearings. Yeah, just, just to get us all situated, get, to get on the same page. And we'll take our time with it. I was a, I got a little wild and I put a lot of cheese on each of the plates, <laughs> so I'm very, very sorry about that. That's pretty fine, uh, yes. <laughs> And, uh, but we, again, I just want to welcome you all. Thank you for joining us. Before we start, um, we're going to go back to this, but we want to give a big shout out to all the moms out there. Yes, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Before I forget and go any further to well, my you. wife. Exactly. Um, first time <laughs> mommy. And of course, to my mom who's with us as well, yeah. looking down. Exactly. Um, we will, um, oh, and then I should also mention um, big shout out to Grays by Sam in the Little Italy Food Hall who helped us with the wine selections today. So uh, we'll be walking you through those yep, as well. Absolutely. So um, if you have a YouTube account and you're watching, you're able to do chat. So that's how we're going to do questions today. If you want to ask as we're going along, I'm just going to be monitoring some of the questions. Happy to try to answer them for you all. Um, if you don't have an account, you can just still watch um, and uh, I'll still bring up the questions and try to stump you. Okay. See if anybody can stump the professor. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> stump the professor. The professor, I'm hungry. So maybe we should begin. Or am I more yeah. thirsty? Ooh. Both. Let's pour the white. Okay. I'm going to pour the white. And I'm, I'm going to say, so the Pinot Grigio, you guys, you, I used to poo-poo screw tops for wine. I don't poo-poo them anymore. It's just so handy and easy that I love it. So uh, anyways, the Pinot Grigio, I've had it in the freezer for about an hour because I like it very, very chilled. Um, Pinot Grigio, Rob, I just was reading, they claim it's the second most popular white in America. Oh, wow. Would you believe that? Would you buy it? I know sure. Chardonnay's number one. Gotta be number mm -hmm. one. I would have guessed Sauvignon Blanc. Personally. I would have too. I would have too. Pinot Grigio, apparently, everybody, second most popular um, wine, white wine in America. Now, the grape is mostly known, obviously, Pinot Grigio is an Italian word. So it's an Italian, you know, famous in Italy, but actually the grape itself originated in Burgundy, France. So it's in that line of um, grapes <laughs> that are so good with yeah. cheese because Burgundies are always good with cheese anyway, which is Pinot Noir, whole other story. But um, Pinot Grigio comes from that same family, which now all makes sense. If you did get this Fontenelle, um, this is from Fruilly, if I'm pronouncing that, region, which is near Veneto, which is the Venice area of Italy, um, super famous for their Pinot Grigios. And uh, I'm going to start there with a cheers to everyone. 
may we have a very fun tasting and a very fun evening. And uh, Rob, what cheese should we start with? And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go do this tasting because I have not personally tried <laughs> these to see if we like them with how we paired them. So if you can hold off and try to eat some of the cheese with one wine, some with the other, it'd be kind of fun to get votes of if we think they really worked or not. Um, but at, that, at any rate, that's what we'll do. So yeah, play, let's definitely play around and we are gonna start uh, in order with that number one cheese. And the cheese itself is called Sapor del Piave and it is a cow's milk cheese and it's aged for a year plus. It's probably more like a year and a half. And uh, it's got the nice uh, tyrosine crystals in it Ooh. and that comes from the age. Oh, look at how cool that yeah. looks on that knife. <laughs> uh, that is 100% cow's milk and uh, it's from the Piave River Valley in Veneto. The region is Veneto. Of course, the, the big uh, and most famous city there is, is Venice. And they specialize for in, in the cheese world in cow's milk, aged cheeses, cheeses uh, similar to Asiago, which maybe some of you have heard of or tasted before. Montazio is another one from the region. Uh, we, we've featured a cheese called Piave Vecchia, which mm -hmm. is in the same family as this, it's just a little bit younger than this cheese. Yeah. And they come in various ages. If you love a Parmigiano Reggiano, a really dry, hard, salty uh, Italian cheese, uh, you're gonna love this one as oh, well. Love, 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 love this cheese. This mm. should become as well known as Parmigiano Reggiano, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. That is so good. To me, it's pineapple-y. I don't know if anybody gets pineapple into the cheese itself, or it's because I'm drinking the wine, which is also, to me, kind of nectarine-y, pineapple-y. To me, it's like, I was I ate so much yeah. of this this week. You did? <laughs> very, very nutty. It's extremely nutty cheese, and a lot of cheeses from this region are, are really nutty. And then there's hints of like, passion fruit or pineapple mm. kind of sweet tropical notes and i don't know where that comes from i can't explain it but a good pairing is one where you, you know what we suggest doing is taste the cheese on its own taste the wine mm. on its own and then try both together and see how the flavors interact and, and sort of uh, meld mesh play around mm -hmm. so something that yeah. is nutty on its own fruity on its own can come together and give you a completely different flavor yeah. sensation do you think the cows are eating the the pinot you know, the grapes? It, it's possible because <laughs> they go so well together. It could possibly be. <laughs> it is be very possible. Very possible because you said you are what you eat. <laughs> well, we so we uh, you know when, when we do these tastings, we try to give you a nice little variety. And so um, if you're if you're wondering, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot most of you have, have been into our shops. Maybe you came in for the first time to, to pick up your plate. But uh, we carry cheeses from all over the world, and in uh, in what 16, 17 years of doing business, we've had thousands of different cheeses, and uh, so that brings up the question: How do we have so many different <laughs> cheeses? Yes, from one main ingredient. Right? One main ingredient, and I'm sure you um, have all guessed what that is: it's milk. <laughs> There's a couple other ingredients, and uh, one is salt. And salt's easy; it's a preservative and a flavoring. Another ingredient is called rennet. And rennet is responsible for coagulating the milk. It turns liquid milk into curds and whey. Uh, the cheesemaker works with the curd to create whatever cheese they're gonna make. Um, but it's really, it all comes down to the milk. And that's why there's so many different varieties of cheese. Um, and if you just think about that one simple ingredient of milk, we have three major animals, goat, sheep, and cow. And then within each animal, there's dozens of breeds. Uh, you then have, um, Gina touched on this, the effect of geographic location in the mm -hmm. diet of the animal. You are what you eat. Um, so that is very important. You can put the same animal in a different part of the world and they're mm -hmm. gonna give a different milk based on whatever grows in that place. Yes, and to jump on that, remember mm -hmm. um, Rove de Garrigue, there was a cheese we yes. had where it was a goat milk. Say. You know what I'm gonna mm -hmm. say, right? They, all they did was eat rosemary bushes and no lie. Mm -hmm. You just ate the, it was creamy white ball of shed, yeah. goat milk that just looked like any other goat milk cheese, but you ate it and it was like liquid rosemary. It was so good. And it's because they ate rosemary bushes. Look for Rove de Gris. We don't have it right no. now. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we shouldn't be promoting here. a cheese that we don't have. But what's kind of interesting about that cheese, it's a little goat ball. Yes, I said it, goat yeah. ball. Um, but <laughs> each, each goat ball is from an individual goat. And so you can, we can get a case of like 10 of them and they can all taste different. They if, should name them like- They should. June. This, this is, is Ethel, this Ethel. is uh, Margaret. 
but every ball will taste different. I mean, I ta- I remember tasting one and it had a, kind of a garlicky essence yeah, to it, and, and I, I'm pretty sure that that dug up some garlic. That goat, yeah, just got into yeah. some wild so he, garlic or something. You definitely are yeah. what you eat. It's from southern France, and um, but that's just an example. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know people come into the shops all the time and they they look for specific cheeses. Remember, there's tens of thousands of cheeses out there and we only have room for about 150 <laughs> at any given time at a yes. time okay so if we don't have the robe jaggery we have something yes. very very similar Try something else but this is Pori del Piave. We had a question mm-hmm. from a Margo. Yes, Margo. Um, wants, hey Margo wants to know what beer maybe you would pair with this and Ooh. I have a guess and I'm gonna see what you say oh so mm-hmm. I, I would say so we, we talk about different types of pairings and there's no right or wrong for something like this I would to be honest, I like something crisp and effervescent, like a lager. That's what I would suggest. A that. lager, okay, and I, yeah, I think so too because it's light and kind yeah. of um, bubbly with that. Um, I was kind of thinking, what about uh, fruity, like you know, the Belgian That'd be the sours one. that have the fruit yeah, flavors? Because so, this is so fruity to me. And some, sometimes, kind of setting up the different types of pairings, and we say types of pairings, and we're referring to these guidelines that we use when we put various pairings together and the sa- these same guidelines are true for beer whiskey coffee um, as they are for wine of course we're doing wine tonight but um, these guidelines uh, are complementary or contrasting in contrasting par- pairings are opposites mm-hmm. that come together and hopefully balance out yeah. so that would be like a fruity beer that's for, true per se. With, with a fruity with, with, yeah. that yeah. would be a complimentary pairing yeah. Yeah, so, which I think this is. Yeah, yeah definitely. or something salty mm-hmm. with something sweet would be yeah. a contrasting pairing. Um, regional, so if there's a beer from the same region, from Veneto, that would be an example of a regional pairing. And then there's textural, and textural pairing has nothing to do with flavor. It has everything to do with, uh, <laughs> sorry, there's someone smiling over there. It's, Aww, making, it's making, making me smile. Me smile. <laughs> there's, um, textural pairing is bubbles with a really creamy or kind of mouth coating cheese and that's why a lot of folks argue that beer has an advantage over wine when it comes to pairing with cheese and so um, that's why I, I, I like a, a lager or something really effervescent because it gives you that textural pairing and that textural match as well. Um, nice, good, I like it. Good stuff? Good stuff. Uh, I think, oh somebody, we already, Heidi has jumped in and tasted the Piave. I mean, I'm the Sephora. Wait, did, did the Heidi Piave. get ahead of ahead Heidi of jumped ahead, but she's ahead. No, she's ahead on the wine world, but Heidi, I'm going to catch up in just a minute. Give me just a second. I will catch you. But she says she thinks it's better with the white than the red. Okay. And that's interesting because so many people think, oh, you've got to have the red wine, you know, all the foods and stuff with the red wines. And with cheese especially, white wines need to get credit yeah. with cheese. And I, I'm with you, Heidi, so far. Let me jump into the red too, and I'll t- test it with you. Yeah. But um, just to see, because you know, we want to be scientific about this and give an equal due to each one. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, you like it with that. I'm gonna taste this one. Yeah, so this is regional, and it's not contrast, it's complimentary. Um, because it's both from Veneto region, and they have complimentary. And I should, I should also yeah. mention, I mean, those types of, those types of pairings, I mean, you can find a pairing that hits on all of those things. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be one or the other. There's no perfect. And again, I mean, your favorite is the best for you. Everyone's right. palate is different. Everyone has a different favorite. So there's no right or wrong. Yeah. There's the Cheese one, with fish. There's no test. At Red the with list. freeze. Yeah. <laughs> Blue with white. So how do we like the Sangio? Okay, that is good too. That changed this whole thing. Mm-hmm. To me, suddenly, this turned into a vegetable. I'm not kidding. Mm-hmm. Before, it was all pineapple. Now, I think it's like a, a, a green bean. So it went from sweet to uh-huh. savory. It kind of went more savory with the red to me, with the Sangiovese, which is delicious. We'll mm-hmm. talk about Sangiovese later. But oh, it completely changed the cheese. I think the wines both stood on their own, mm-hmm. but um, they changed the cheese. Very mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, so it's fun. Um, ooh, a question, can we cook with the Sephora del Piave like you do Parmigiano-Reggiano? Absolutely. Yeah. Like I would grate this on pasta in place of Parmigiano for a little sweeter touch, less salty. I, absolutely. I, I, I mean, for a cheese this. like this, you're going to have to grate it. It's not going to melt really no, very cheese. easily like in yeah. a grilled cheese or something like that, but, but grate it really thinly, yeah. very fine. Can I tell another trick? Oh, if we had a big piece, I would show you. But get your potato peeler with a chunk like the Sephora del Piave and use a potato peeler to just make super thin shavings of Mm -hmm. this 
that is delicious because it's wafer thin and you lay, lay it on your tongue and it kind of melts. Mm -hmm. um, so I would suggest that's a cool presentation with a hard cheese like this. Oh yeah. What do you think? I, yeah. Well, one, something I do is I will just have a huge chunk of uh, Parmigiano Reggiano or Sapor del Piave, you know, a couple pounds and it just sits <laughs> out on my counter. It really never goes in the fridge and it really, it goes on everything. <laughs> Asparagus, cheese, broccoli, yes. cheese. Oh, well that defeats a purpose? Well, <laughs> that's okay. It You're getting good. your vegetables in. I'm now. getting my I, vegetables. I will argue yeah. that as long as you get your vegetable in, <laughs> if the cheese is alongside, you're still getting your vegetables. Oh yeah, eggs, polenta, anything. Yes, yes. Oh, this on polenta, oh, yeah. fabulous. So good. Sapporo del Piave, you guys, learn to love it. I think you will. It's really good, and I, I was mentioning, um, it's not as expensive as Parmigiano Reggiano too. So that's, that's kind of nice because Parmigiano can be quite expensive. This is a little less. So I, I mentioned earlier about the, the, the name controlled, or um, I'm sorry, like cheeses coming from certain places and, and having to, to come from certain places to, to take on a certain name. Um, this cheese is protected by the Italian um, system for protecting all of the, their agricultural uh, products. But, but the same systems apply to, to cheese and to other uh, foods like butter and meat and, and olives. Yeah. And um, so the uh, Parmigiano Reggiano is the most famous protected. I mean, it is the king of cheeses. Yeah, definitely. And it's the most sold. It's the most bought, eaten, exported. The single imported. most popular cheese in the world. It is. Yes. Parmigiano Reggiano. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, but similar to champagne. So champagne is a protected product and uh, it's more expensive. One, because of the process. It, it, you have Years. To, it goes through a process. Mm -hmm. It takes skill to make champagne, but it's also the name has some cachet to it. Um, Parmigiano Reggiano has, has has more of a name, but yep. you can find great versions or uh, imitations, if you will, mm -hmm. for a cheaper price. Yeah, because exactly. they're not called Parmigiano Reggiano. Exactly. For it's still pa delicious. For Parmigiano Reggiano mm -hmm. to be called that, it has to come from a certain region. It has to be cow's milk. It has to be aged a minimum of yes. twelve months. I mean, and on and on and on just like a champagne in, in France. So this one just has to, just comes from a different region. Love. There, there's another cheese, if you like this, to look for called Grana Padano. Mm. What did I hear? The the poor cousin or what's it's the like term? It's like a poor man's a Poor man's farm? Region. That's right, I've heard that term, poor man's farm. Grana, but Grana Padano, you know, it's really interesting. Grana Padano means grainy cheese from the Po River Valley. And it um, it's it's almost an identical mm -hmm. recipe as Parmigiano Reggiano. Mm -hmm. There, there's yeah, difference, okay. differences are not as strict on the regulations for it to take on that name. So it can come from, I think, four different regions and the, the age minimum is six months. Okay. And so it's a, it's a little bit less expensive, yeah. but for, so I've heard people think, or people say that Grana Padano is a, um, is a fancier cheese and maybe because it sounds more exotic because it's not as known as Parmigiano Reggiano, but it's, um, it's really more of an imitation of Parmigiano Reggiano. Yeah. Sapporo del Piave, though. Yeah. Doesn't that sound good? Sapporo like, del Piave your, is, is a great one. dish, say, hey, here's my pasta with Sapporo del Piave. And this, this is a fairly new cheese. Parmesan Reggiano, of course, has been around for centuries. Yeah. This one was first made in the 1960s, so oh, wow. they're on like so a third really generation cheese mm -hmm. maker for that one. I'm going to go to Rob Palette Cleansers yeah. because you've oh, got all these things talk about, you the talk about I'm going to this one right now. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and most everybody has similar accoutrements on their plates. Uh, we've got some kind of nuts. Um, yeah, these are like corn nuts that we have. Some people have almonds. Chicos. Um, we've got cornichons, these little pickles, which gives a nice sour... Um, acidity. Uh, yeah, yeah, acidity mm -hmm. and, and a little crunch, a little texture. Mm -hmm. Everyone has chocolate of some sort. We'll get to the chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then dried fruit. There's uh, ap uh, apricots, cranberries. Some folks have raisins. Mm -hmm. so. All meant to be palate cleansers, right? Just yeah. To have a break from the creaminess and stuff of the cheese. And yeah. go, going back to what I mentioned earlier about the different types of pairings, if you if you have something that's really salty or really strong and stinky, throw something sweet in your mouth to kind of balance it out, and that's a, that's a good way um, to to sort of tame it, to calm it down a little bit. Yes. <laughs> stronger <laughs> and the stronger the cheese, go for um, the sweeter accompaniment, whether that be in accoutrement or a wine any, or any kind of beverage. That's a good tip, good, good tip. Mm -hmm. And we just learned, you know what, Rob? You know, I'm cooking with Parmigiano, uh -huh. but um, I like the sound of Cheryl. I'd like to cook with you someday because she likes to cook with tequila. So. Oh, Cheryl, where do, where, where do you live, Cheryl? We'll be right over, <laughs> we'll be right over and <laughs> in the future, uh -huh. tequila and cheese pairing. I think so. We haven't done that yet. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. We've done whiskey and cheese. We've done yeah. whiskey and, or sorry. Yeah, whiskey and cheese, yeah. cocktails and cheese, yes. all kinds of, everything with cheese. Yes. 
Okay, very good. We digress on I'm hungry. We're still on the first one. Okay. <laughs> number two. Move on. Let's move on to number two. <laughs> and the second cheese is looks like this. It's a like a long kind of spirit or triangle shape. And um, I cut these really big. So it's uh, this one is called Out Blossom. And it's um, top middle. Mm -hmm. And this one is from Austria. It's cow's milk. And we try to do different milk types, textures, different countries. Um, so this is an alpine style cheese. We've talked about this before. Alpines are our favorites. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're almost always cow's milk. They're always, or not always, but usually a, a texture similar to this. So this one's about six months uh, mm -hmm. in age. And um, speaking of mothers, it's from, this yes. is kind of an ode to Gina's mom, who to is from mom. Austria. From Gert, yes. Do re mi. She is from Austria. <laughs> and this, this comes from her, her country. She comes from high in the Alps. Yeah. And um, we have seen the cows that produce this milk for this cheese. And uh, the reason it's called Alp Blossom is because on the edge, on the rind, yes, it's edible. Um, it's rolled in Alp Blossoms. Literally, they harvest blossoms from around the farms and then they roll the wheels in the blossoms and let them age. And you've got to eat the blossoms because that's part of the cheese. They meant to put it there. It's yeah. not just beautiful, it's delicious. Well, and we talked about the, yeah. the importance of diet and you are what you eat. And, and the Alpines are so delicious because of the diet, really the diet of the animals. They are up there, they, they get up to 10,000 feet and they are munching on these incredible grasses and wildflowers every day. And um, so the rind on this cheese is really uh, the cheese maker. And in this case, th this cheese is actually made at a cheese making school um, in Austria. So they're, they're just um, paying tribute to, to their terroir, to their earth, to their mountain pastures. And, uh, and the, the breed, I talked about breeds for uh, a moment earlier. This is cow's milk, but it's made with Swiss uh, brown cow milk and uh, they produce a little bit less milk than say a Holstein. Holsteins are the big black and white spotted ones, those you know cartoony looking ones yes. that you see every what we yeah. see. We see a lot. Yeah. This the is happy a, California cow. Yeah, this is this is a smaller cow. It produces less milk, but they get a great yield because it's high in fat. Um, but the flavor is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. What's amazing is the rind on this out blossom. <laughs> I have to say Rob. So the interior to me today, it has a little of that funky um, Mm, barnyardiness mm -hmm. that alpines can have but to me the rind is beautiful mm -hmm. it's really floral and yummy i like it kind of equally with the pinot grigio and the sangiovese it stands up to both and mm -hmm. it doesn't change the cheese the sapori changed with the wines to me the alp blossom is staying the same yeah. with the wines so it, it's interesting i don't know what everybody else thinks if they like the white the San, uh, pinot grigio or the sangiovese better with alp blossom but you should try them both so yeah. I think they both work. And, and Alp Blossom, and this sort of family or this style of cheeses, they typically pair with those bigger whites and, and sometimes the sweeter whites like the Rieslings and those, those German or Eastern French style uh, white wines that are fairly big. Oh yeah. They're Slovenian great cooking cheeses. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so th speaking of cooking and melting, this is a great one oh, for that. Yes. Melt this cheese, you guys. Yeah. The kitchen will be aromatic if you do. But it works like a dream. Was that a it's nice so, way of saying that it's going to stink? It's going to stink. It is. It's going to stink, but it melts. It's so perfect. And it's oh just so good. We did fondue the other day, mm. and we had some of this in the fondue. Fabulous. It's amazing. Amazing. I'm going to jump ahead because we've got, we're going to have to answer this question, I understand, for every cheese. Yeah. What beer would you put with this? Ah. Yeah. Well, so the thing I love about the Alpines is that they're so versatile. Um, these, they, do so, they do great with Belgians. Them. Yeah. Oh, I haven't tried it with a Belgian. Uh -huh. okay. um, we are in an IPA town. They're strong enough to stand up for to IPAs. Yeah, I wouldn't swallow it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, I would I would go with a more like uh, with a lighter IPA for that. Yeah. Um, I, I um, my favorite for IPAs are, are not the Alpines or their cheddars and like the softer goat cheeses, mm -hmm. but. Um, IPAs would do, do well with that as well. And then what are they famous for? Okay, I'm such not a beer person. I'm going to have to have my own, I'm going to have to go to class for beer. <laughs> but a Pilsner or Lager, the light, because that's what they have most often in yeah. Austria. Those are the beers that they yeah, sell. Yeah, yeah. So I, those go, of course, very well. And I think to me, that's they're like the champagne of beers. They're just light and bubbly. Yeah. Right? So, but they're palate cleansing. So they go good with kind of all the cheese. Well, and, and also, you know, we're, we're so, we, we are hoping to be going to the Alps this year. 
um, to go on a cheese visit, and uh, we'll be ending the trip in Munich for Oktoberfest, <laughs> which is not which is good. not happening. So we will end in Munich with doing something else. But <laughs> but the the the, um, the region in Germany is Bavaria, and it's mm-hmm. that's part of the Alps, the Bavarian Alps, and so the cheeses they produce there are in this family, and mm-hmm. so that's what they're pairing with with those yeah, cheeses as sure. well. So um, kind of lighter, again, mm-hmm. effervescent, yeah. really um, really nice textural pairing. Something that you can drink a lot of. <laughs> well, that's why they sell the beers this big. Exactly. In the Oktoberfest, because you can drink a lot of it. <laughs> uh, this one, I think you need to do the Cornichon. Yeah, this, which this is, is a pickle. perfect Cornichon Yeah, cheese. this is a Cornichon cheese. These go together yeah. crazy good. And the question again came back, can you eat the rind? Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Eat the rind on most cheeses. Yeah. Uh, right? Not, why would you not eat the rind? Uh, the next one, if there's <laughs> rind on it. Okay, well, we'll move on to the next as Robert Jim. The, uh, so that's the out blossom, but keep the questions coming if you have any more as you're tasting. Um, and save some of your plates for later on if you want to uh, bust out the whiskey or the beer um, after the wine. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> so be it. The, the next cheese is, looks like this. It's got little black flecks in it. And we're calling this the bridge cheese, you yeah. guys. We called it the bridge because... Because it's, try it with both, is yes. what we were thinking. We want to get a vote if it goes better with the Pinot Grigio or the Sangiovese. This, this is a Gouda style cheese. The base is a Gouda and it's cow's milk. It is from Holland, which is the home of, of Gouda. Um, the piece that we have has a little bit of the rind on it and it's, a, it's like a waxy, um, yeah, it's like a waxy coating. I think a lot of the cheeses are not going to have it, but ours did. And um, it's kind of good that it did because I can tell you. Identify it. Yeah, yeah um, I can tell you that Gouda is one of the things that defines Gouda is other than the fact that they're from Holland, which is in the Netherlands, um, is that they are wrapped and aged in wax, usually. This is a pretty young Gouda. This is just a few months, and so the texture um, even tells us that. Um, it's kind of that soft, Pliable, supple, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. texture. And uh, the black truffles are Italian. Oh my God, the truffles. Can we talk about the truffles? Yeah. Wow, so truffle. I, mm. Truffles are a love or hate thing. Some, <laughs> I just love them. I'm just saying. Jean is a love. I'm a she love. votes love. Mm-hmm. But the truffles are, uh, the, I believe they're Italian truffles and they're black truffles. Mm-hmm. Black truffles will give you kind of a mushroomy, earthy uh, note. And um, they, they're they really fun to play around with. I This should go with both wines. It just kind of, pick your poison. Um, truffles are... Uh, are in the mushroom family. They're um, the, this is we're talking about the fancy mushrooms that, that grow underground that get rooted out by uh, well dogs now. It used to be pigs. Pigs are it's a no. It used to be no. Wait, wasn't it opposite because didn't dogs eat them? Uh, and no. Now they use pigs opposite. No opposite. Uh-huh. Pigs were banned because well they both like the taste of truffles, oh, but. The I dog, could be a pig or a dog. But here's the thing: these things. the dogs could be yeah. trained not to eat them. The pigs could not be trained to not, not to eat, eat them. them. Or the pigs just didn't care. <laughs> exactly. Pigs like, whatever. Pigs actually have better noses than dogs do. Oh, no way. Um, yeah. And, uh, they, and in some places, they, they've used goats to root out the truffle in, um, yeah, in Sardinia and, and other Never places. Heard. But they grow underground. They, they grow um, symbiotically with tree roots. And there's white truffle, black truffle, and they come in, in various um, uh, part times of the year. But the best truffles come in the fall. Yeah. And um, really the best truffles are this, they're called a winter white truffle, mm-hmm. and they come October, November. October, yeah. And um, they're, they're, re- they, they're native to a few places, but the main place is northern Italy. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, gosh, those truffles, the really expensive high-end ones can go for like yeah. $2,000 a pound, yeah. depending on the market that year. Yeah. And if you find a, a big truffle, then you get well, so much money for those. Yeah. But I tell you what, Rob, I, and everybody, getting truffle-infused cheeses, I think it's more truffly mm-hmm. in flavor than sometimes getting the raw truffle yeah. shaving. Honestly, have had it both ways, and kudos to the cheesemakers and how that works, mm-hmm. but having it infused in the cheese, the truffle flavor is much more intense than sometimes the raw shaved truffle. Yeah. So I think you're getting a better deal I getting think, it in the cheese. I think but what I'm that biased. is... <laughs> go, a little bit goes a long way, and that's yeah. why um, their truffles are so um, they're they're so famous and they're, they're so well known because of how strong and pungent and powerful yeah. they are. And um, I think what it is is the cheese is kind of a vessel, and that fat is just a good conduit. Good and so I think that especially when they sit out and these and. 
Maybe we should have said this uh, when, when you picked up your plates. Let it sit out for a half an hour or yes. an hour. Let the cheese sweat. Let them come to room, room temperature. Much better. And uh, yeah, the, the flavor and aroma really will come out. Yeah. And uh, the room's going to smell like truffle and stinky cheese. It's so good. Truffle is an aphrodisiac. I yeah. love truffle. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Can we have a, a result? Do you, do you have a guess, Rob, of uh, more people liked Alp Blossom with the Pinot Grigio or the Sangiovese? I'm going to say Pinot Grigio. You are completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wrong before. <laughs> yeah, no, I liked them both. It was, they were both good, but um, the votes are with the Sangiovese. Uh -huh. So far, the truffle with Sangiovese. Um, and I'm going to vote the truffle with the Sangiovese as well. Okay. It's interesting. I don't mind it with the Pinot Grigio, but I think with this, it's rich. It's so decadent uh -huh. together. Like, they're two decadent things. So I think I like the complementary things better today. Is it true that a little bit goes a long way? Yeah. You that just need a tiny bites. little bite? And you get the flavor of the truffle. It's an infusion of truffle. Yeah. Guess what question, though, we have to answer then? What's that? What beer goes with the truffle? Oh. Ooh, truffle beer. See, I don't know. I don't know enough about beer. You yeah. have to help me out. I'm not sure. It's a good a one. Truffle beer. Because um, truffles are typically, you know, France, the Perigord uh -huh. truffle or Italian. So again, are we talking a Pilsner, like the lager, like a something like that? It, it always... You do a stout. I, I mean, I hate to again. give a non-answer, but it, it just always what depends on... It depends on which direction you want to go with the truffle or with the, with the, with the pairing. And uh, like, do you, do you want it to be just a, a, a vessel? Do you want... Do you want the cheese to shine. Do you want the beer to shine? Are you are you planning on having six beers? Are, I mean, what's what, what are we going for? <laughs> One IPA or six pilsners. There's your answer. Yeah. It depends what mood you're in. <laughs> I mean, is this Oktoberfest? Are we you know, exactly? Do you not want to get up and from the bar? And yes. Lose your seat. But it's fun to experiment. Yeah. I'm having a good time just trying both of them. Yeah. And that. And, and okay. That's... Before I forget, humble wants to say hi to you. Oh, can I say something really quick? Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to keep up, everyone. Yeah, with me. I wanted to make sure I got a shout out to the, all the moms out there, our moms, and, and tell you Happy Mother's Day. I also want to give a shout out to my favorite adult men's baseball team. And they're called the Lugnuts. Wh who, where is this team? Oh, just don't worry about it. But they, they, <laughs> they know who they are. Shout out to the Nuts. To the Nuts. Who doesn't like nuts? <laughs> yes, we've got nuts on our plate. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, idea, farmhouse saison. That's, yeah. yeah. A saison. That, that would be a good one. So we, when this we do... This was from Cara. Cara. A mm -hmm. lot of what we, what we do, we do a lot of beer and cheese pairings, and, and a lot of what we go for is just... So we have a really, really difficult job, and it is to taste, taste, taste. And so when we bust out a dozen cheeses and a, a bunch of drinks, a lot of times we there's the wild card and we just put something funky and kind of and just wild and out there with a with a cheese that's kind of funky and just and sometimes it goes horribly wrong <laughs> but sometimes it's great yeah and so it's good it's all about just playing around and, and yeah uh, and seeing what happens so far i don't think these have been wildly wrong i think they've been wildly great so far so good <laughs> keep it going Rob. good 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 don't muck it up <laughs> okay so we did. We talked about memoir. Yes. I don't know why they call it memoir, but uh, maybe yeah. I'll why do they call it memoir? Later. There's a question to be answered. But it is cow's milk, and it is a gouda. Um, gouda. Gouda, and we've had. And gouda is just the name of a town in Holland. Um, so far, we've had three cow's milk cheeses. We don't have a sheep's milk cheese on the plate tonight, but the next cheese is a goat's milk cheese, and it looks like this. Oh. And, uh, Look how white that is. You can tell that, right? With the goats, you yeah. definitely get that white, white, white appearance. So no beta carotene. Yes. No beta carotene. And I'll go back to a question. One of, one of the white. ways mm -hmm. to, to tell goat's milk cheeses is that, the, is that they always keep that very uh, white color. Um, so this is a 100% goat's milk cheese, and it's from Paso Robles. It's from a really, really... Paso Robles. Or Paso Robles, however <laughs> you pronounce it. <laughs> if anyone really lives there... We need to know. I'm sorry. I had to interject. Somebody's going to type, but we're not going to know it. We're not going to know. Saying, <laughs> the yeah. pronunciation. Is it Paso Robles or Paso Robles? I say Robles. We do, but the... Because it is, is it a Spanish word, right? Um, Humberto, you know. You speak Spanish. All right. Love nut. Yeah. He says... What, do the, what do the nuts say? What do the nuts say? Remember on the radio, they said Robles. I'm just telling you, people, That's when true. you go wine tasting, they might you might be in Paso Robles. I'm <laughs> just saying. Just this saying. is a great cheesemaker. Right. He, his, uh, his facility is right across the street, speaking of beer from Firestone Walker. Which would go good. This yeah, they, they, so that's your, that's your regional pairing if, you're, if you have any of these Central Coast Creamery 
cheeses. He does uh, most of what he, well, he does everything. He does cow's milk, he does sheep's milk, and uh, this cheese is called Dreamweaver, and it's his washed rind goat's milk, and uh, it was always his dream to make this type of a cheese, and that's where the name comes from, Dreamweaver. The cheesemaker's name is Reggie Jones. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Um, he'll probably be down here for our cheese expo in, uh, in October um, to, to sample, sample his cheeses, but he makes all different kinds of cheeses. They are um, just award winners. His daughter now is making cheese with him. Mm. She's in high school, I think, and she's winning awards. She did, and I forgot the name of her cheese. Um, but, Shooting yeah. Star she, is her creamery. Yes, but what was the cheese? I don't remember the cheese. Aries? Like, kudos. Aries, yeah, yeah. that must be her sign. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching mm -hmm. Reggie, um, kudos. Good stuff. The, okay, I have a vote. I'm sorry. Well, so just a quick mm -hmm. a quick word about um, washed rind cheeses. I, I'm going to guess they're, that they're, these are some of the most difficult cheeses to make. These are these are cheeses that, that cheesemakers love and they get, they get really, they're really passionate about. Um, when I say washed rind, I'm referring to the aging process. Mm -hmm. um, so that the cheese forms and you know into a little wheel, and then every few days the cheesemaker will will wash give it a it. literally yeah, wash it. We'll mm -hmm. scrub it whether it's yeah. with a with a rag dipped in brine or it could be dipped in beer or wine or or any kind of liquid. But it creates a a growth on the rind mm -hmm. and it turns the color to this like pinkish or orange, and you you have that on. Yeah. More cheese. It's really, yeah, that's it's beautiful. I would say the most of this style of cheese is made with cow's milk. So this is unique in yeah, that it is point. made mm -hmm. with goat's milk. Yeah. And I just thought of something. He, I, I use the word unique. Um, he has a cheese oh, okay. called Unique. U e W E. E W E. Yeah. Unique. Uh, yeah. And it's made with sheep's milk. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Two things, Rob. Very okay. important. The resounding answer is Robles. Oh, okay. So, uh, too many people. Do we have Tiffany natives? knows. Okay. Humble knows. Everybody knows. Robles. Um, Robles. They're That's like Robles, Robles, you idiots. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is the one, you guys. I I don't like this with the Sangiovese really? as much as I like it with the Pinot Grigio, uh -huh. which is shocking because typically a washed rind, stinky, mm -hmm. whatever. You might want something bolder, more, but I like it with the Pinot Grigio better. Okay. And it's a lighter goat than um, the interior flavor. To me, is very light mm -hmm. for a goat cheese. But the rind is spectacular. I would cut and eat just the rind on this cheese. Yeah. I, I like the interior, but it's very mild. But the rind is spectacular. Well, the, so the yeah. notes on this one, so the interior of the cheese we call the paste, and mm -hmm. they say it's very like a sweet cream, so kind of mild. Goat's milk has a has a tang to it, and it can be sweeter. The the rind, though, and it definitely try the rind. If you don't like it, don't, don't continue eating it, but try <laughs> it. Um, it's going to have a gritty. kind of a gritty, coarse, uh, maybe crunchy um, texture to it, and um, it, it'll ha it might have a little bit of funk. It's this is an oxymoron, but this is a mild stinky cheese. Um, so the, mm -hmm. the the stinky cheeses mild stinky. When you hear the term stinky cheese, they're what, what we're referring to are washed rind cheeses. It's that category of cheeses that are that reddish pinkish color, and um, some of the European classics would include Epois, Limburger, Munster. Uh, and then there's some really, really great American versions, like this, for example. There's one from Cowgirl Creamery in Northern California, and it's called a Red Hawk. It's great. We just got one into the shops, speaking of beer, and we're going to be featuring this next okay. week. Are you going to spill the beans? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to spill the beans. Okay. But there's a cheese we got in yesterday. It's called Willow Bee, and it's from a fantastic cheesemaker in Vermont called Jasper Hill. And uh, they... They actually were in contact with Ale Smith, the incredible San Diego based brewery, of 25th, legendary. It's legendary, 25th anniversary. Legendary mm -hmm. Ale Smith. And Ale Smith actually sent out um, one of their beers to Vermont. And the cheese, uh, the cheese maker washed this, uh, this Willow Bee cheese in Ale Smith beer, aged them for a little bit, sent them back to San Diego, and we have them in the shops. But it's a good example of a washed rind. And those cheeses, like any cheeses, will get stronger and stinkier over time as they ripen. And uh, they just got here, so they are a mild stinky cheese mild but stinky cheese, yeah. hold on to it for a few weeks and it'll be a stinky stinky cheese yes and that's good yeah, yeah. keeping um some of those cheeses longer increases their <laughs> <laughs> 
And just like everything okay. else, just like everything else we're saying, there's no right or wrong. No. If you like it on the milder end, that's that's great. Eat it then then milder. Eat yeah. it then. Yeah. If you like it stronger, then hold on to it yeah. for a little while. For sure. And this is so funny. Uh, Rob, uh-huh. to tastes. This is this is indecisive cheese. <laughs> We've got 50-50. I of think who wants it with red or who wants it with white. Yeah. So that's interesting. It's very interesting. Some of the others were kind of straightforward. This one swings both ways. Yeah. So that's very funny to me. <laughs> but I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. do we have any feedback on the on the comments about whether or not we just like the cheese on its own? Yeah, do it's, we like the cheese just on its, it's own? It's a great cheese. It's just, just a snack. But yeah. some people just aren't into the washed rind, some people yeah. aren't into the texture, some people don't like goat. Yeah, Rob, but to me this is none of those. Like uh-huh. washed rinds can be so stinky, and mm. then that kind of is off putting to me sometimes. I definitely have a harder time with some of the washed rinds myself. Yeah. Um and goat, I don't even get that huge goatiness. Goatiness. So I'm loving this cheese because mm-hmm. it's in between the two. Yeah. So it's very interesting, but I, I'm very happy about learning more about Dreamweaver. Mm-hmm. And so he makes, uh, this cheese maker makes blue cheeses. He does goudas. He does uh, cheddars, I think. He, he does Alpine style or Swiss style cheeses. And so he's really uh, innovative and creative with how he ages cheeses in different parts of his facility because, you know, they, they can't have a the blue mold. Yeah, getting, yeah. getting into the into this cheese or yeah. or vice versa. Okay, people resoundingly, Rob, uh-huh. in answer to your question, they do like the cheese on its oh, own. Oh, good. And they, they, there's one, mm, cheese with the thing is white is bad. It's so fun. This is so great. The Willoughby, uh-huh. just so you know, which beer it's washed in, oh, it's called oh, Forge Berry. Yeah. Mm-hmm, which is a raspberry. I saw on their website, yeah. Wild Ale, yep. which sounds super cool. It's like cool. a Wild I American. want a Wild Ale. We're gonna, yeah. Well, we're gonna have it. <laughs> yes, we're gonna have Wild Ale tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Tuesday. Say Tuesday. <laughs> We're going to pick it up sometime tomorrow, yeah. So not tomorrow. <laughs> Tuesday and beyond. <laughs> we'll, we'll have it this week. We'll have it this week. Call, we're going to put together a little package yeah. deal. So you could get a wheel of the Willoughby, a Willoughby wheel, and a four-pack of Forge Berry, uh-huh. which what a cool combination. I'm dying to try it. Yeah. I'm trying to get into these fruity ale things yeah. and what's a wild ale i want to know and we'll learn and it's going to be yeah. it's going to have that contrasting thing going on um because it, it's going to be kind of like a funky cheese salty buttery creamy and then the sweetness of of the beer um and then it, of course it's going to have a great textural thing going yeah. on too if okay. you have a, a wild raspberry ale or something yes. something like a lambic at home lambic, right now say, yeah, sure. bust it out for this dream weaver it could be very good you will not be disappointed yeah for beer i i just love textural pairing mm-hmm. with with this type of cheese with this kind yeah. of a texture Super on the cheese good. okay rob you're gonna love this weight cheese on his own uh, Allie asked uh-huh. about washed rinds that aren't stinky, but they typically are. And yeah. I, I agree. Yes, Allie. Washed yes. rinds typically are the stinky cheeses. Uh-huh. Because the the it's dampness a ba- on the rind is a bacteria yeah. that grows. And bacteria create aromas. And yeah. it's tricky, too, mm-hmm. because I've had people come in the shop and they're like, give me your stinkiest cheese. And I and I give them the, the ripest washed rind. And they're like, that's, that's not the... That stinky to to me. Yeah, I mean everyone's me, palate yeah. is different, different, and then I can yeah. give them a goat cheese or a blue cheese, and to them that is, Mild. or crazy Mild. or whatever. I mean, what mm-hmm. everyone's a little different, but I guess my point was when you hear the term stinky cheese, it's it's the term we use lovingly for washed rind, and washed yeah. rind is like the really the technical term. That's what you see in the books, um, and the way to really identify them is by the color of the rind, and they're usually pinkish that texture, reddish. pinkish reddish. Yeah, can be sticky, yeah. right? This isn't sticky at all, which is nice. Uh-huh. I like that it's not sticky. Do you know this term? What? <laughs> I'm learning today from Jill, who says her sister says it smells like goats that are in a rut. Do you know what the term rut means? No. Can... Um, it's breeding time. Maybe in heat? Yes. Well, you've said it before. <laughs> I did. I don't know. But okay. That's a new one for me. I did not know the term that it smells. It's not so. Is it so ruddy? I, it definitely has it's kind a of smell. Okay. To yeah, it, you can smell that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Well, there you go. I mean, I can, I can actually smell that and I can tell it's goat's milk by smelling it. Yeah. Well, that for sure. Yeah. It's goaty. Mm-hmm. It's that term. It's gamey. It's like gamey meat. It's gamey. It's gamey milk. There, there are certain mm-hmm. descri- like there are certain cheeses that it's just like goat cheeses. Sometimes I will describe it as being goaty, but what does that even 
mean unless you unless you <laughs> unless you know what a goat cheese tastes like. Right. I say that about cheddar too. I go, oh, it's it's cheddary. Cheddary. It's cheddar. You know, it's it's unmistakable when you taste a cheddar. You just you know right away that's that's a cheddar. Aha. It has that acidic tang to it. Okay. Okay. And we no one more tip. Thank you, Jill. Girls are in heat. Males are in a rut. Oh God. Okay. Okay. I think I I think I can put that together now. Okay. Great. We won't delve. <laughs> we won't delve further. But thank you. That's a new one for us. So that's great. <laughs> um, the texture changes. So Ace loves the pairing the red with the goat. Um, oh, that's a good. Yeah, because the texture. We're uh -huh. talking about that. That's cool with the texture. Yeah. Thank you that for that feedback. It's so interesting, oh, right? Oh, and it's speaking so of texture for red wine, so you oftentimes get um, red wines that are tannic, and um, right, which they, these are not. We specifically not. picked ones that are not tannic. They're not. Yeah. But if you like those big mm -hmm. tannic reds, like the cabs and the those big like um, that that have that almost like texture to them, that 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 tannic, that dry. Yeah. Um, it, there's many directions you can go, but something with age on it that has um, the crystals in it, that would be a complementary texture pairing. Um, and, and you're looking for something to kind of stand up to that and match up to it. Um, so something with age, the support El Piave would be a good one to try mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Which is your first cheese. For sure, for sure. I have to go back real quick because mm -hmm. we're talking about washed rinds, washed anyway. Uh -huh. And the question came before and I forgot who asked, but about um, why was the alp blossom so stinky? Because mm -hmm. it's not, alp blossom is not washed. Mm -hmm. Although that rind, yeah. it's damp. Well, and I should say this, okay. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Why the alpines are stinky, and they tend to be. Some of them are a bit stinky. Barnyardy is what I'll, I like to say. I'm gonna give you a long answer. A long? <laughs> well, no. What do we have? <laughs> I'm gonna say this. There's many ways to, to categorize cheeses. There's only so many categories of, of styles. Brie, cheddar, gouda, alpine, blue, and washed rind. Like I'm gonna say six styles. Um, so then forget that. And now the other way to categorize is we can go goat, sheep, um, cow, buffalo. You can just start with the milk type and then where they're from and then the texture because that'll tell you something about yeah. age. All right, so you, those are two different ways to categorize things. So um, the Alp Blossom is a cow's milk cheese from Austria, and it's medium texture, and I'm gonna say it's six months or so, maybe a little more than six months. Um, it is also um, sometimes washed rind. And the, the softer cheeses that we were just talking about, the Dreamweaver, those are, those are the ones we were really focusing on when we were talking about washed rinds. But Alpine cheeses can also be washed rind. That is just not the defining um, like characteristic, characteristic. of the similar, cheese. Yeah. Characteristic, yeah. But, but they, they have yeah. kind of a funk, a funk to them. And um, they're natural rinds, but they do get washed. A lot of them get washed. Like we have a cheese called Sharfa Max, and it means sharp to the max. It's from Switzerland, and uh, it's a, it has that same like color, that pinkish, reddish on the rind so they do they can be washed so um it it is it does fall into multiple categories it's just too confusing if we like we should make a chart <laughs> maybe yeah to that's show true all that's true and, sh and show where things overlap um the next thing we're going to talk about is a blue cheese and um so it but before i do that i'm going to go back to the Dreamweaver mm -hmm. because it's in, in one one way to categorize it is to say it's a goat's milk cheese from California, and it's yeah. it's on the younger end. You know, definitely younger. Weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then another way to categorize it is to say it's a washed rind cheese. So all of those things are Apply, true. Yeah. It can be multiple categories. Yeah. yeah. Multiple categories. So, but I love it. Just love it. This is why we started doing cheese classes a dozen years yeah. ago because there's just, there's so much we're learning all the time too. Completely. And everybody, uh, we talked about wines earlier. We tried to give everybody today a Pinot Grigio and a Sangiovese, mm -hmm. but didn't always happen because we did run out. It was such a response to this tasting yeah. and thank you for that. We super appreciate it. Um, but uh, we tried to substitute wines that had the same characteristics, the fruitiness, or the grape combination. Mm -hmm. um, some of the Spanish wines have some of those burgundy type grapes in it. 
Sangioveses, we tried to give everybody Sangioveses. We might have given one Pinot out there. I know there's one Pinot that went out. But again, the fruity yeah, type and of medium, grapes and medium wine. body. Medium red. body, yeah. So that they all would give you that same um, feel mm -hmm. and combinations. So. Okay. We ready for a little blue action? Yes, blue. Because people are scared of blues, Rob. Why? The why are people scared of blues? Well, they're moldy. They're moldy. <laughs> they are truly the moldiest. Could you say the moldiest of cheeses? Definitely. I mean, that's what that's what the color is. It is mold. Mm -hmm. Not to scare anyone off before you eat it. Maybe you've already eaten it. Isn't mold good for you? Maybe you know that already. Yeah. Mold is good for I you. I think so too. Yeah. I think so. Okay. This is a, a cheese called Shaft's Blue or Mine Shaft mm. Blue. It and why? is from Northern California and it's aged in an old California uh, gold mine. Gold mine. Okay, so and I lived in Sacramento, everybody, uh -huh. for a while. And the gold mine is found near Placerville, which is about 40 minutes outside, uh, east of. If you're on your way to Tahoe, on the Highway 50, you're going to pass through Placerville. I bet there's this a lot of cows where, out there. I didn't see many cows, actually. <laughs> I think the happier cows are on Don't the Don't they coast. call Sacramento Cowtown? Okay, stop. That, that's Vacaville. <laughs> oh, Vacaville. Okay. Get it? Anyway. <laughs> oh, I do get it. You get it? I never now. thought about Vaca that. Little. Yeah, that's where the cows are. Vaca. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Anyway, learn something every day. Um, but Placerville is where this mine shaft is, and they actually age the cheese in this old shaft. So that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's um, it, This is cow's milk, and it's aged for about a year. This is one that does not have a natural rind when we get it. So much like the, the goudas come uh, wrapped and aged in the wax, a lot of the blues come wrapped in a foil. And uh, what they do for blues is they will usually uh, make the, the wheel, and this one's maybe four pounds or so, yep, I would say. four or five pounds. Yeah. Um, it takes a few days for the, the, the wheels to mature a little bit. Um, but before they, they turn into wheels, they inject, a, inject them with penicillin. And it's actually called Penicillian Roqueforti that they inject the cheese with. Mm -hmm. um, and it's named for this little village in southern mm -hmm. France called a Roquefort. Guess what cheese comes from there? Um, um, gorgonzola. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> gorgonzola is from gorgonzola. Gorgonzola. Okay. My, <laughs> but the uh, mine shaft blue is injected with the penicillin. Then the cheese maker will poke holes in the cheese, which is called uh, needling. Mm -hmm. They needle uh, the cheese. It, that lets oxygen or, or air into the cheese, and then the blueing will sort of grow out. And in this case, it's this kind of lacy pattern in between the, mm -hmm. the cheese curds that are... It's delicate. It's mm -hmm. delicate. The, the, so that means the curds don't get pressed really tight together. Yeah. That gives the um, the, cur the the blue in a little um, area to, yeah. to grow and, and, and go wild. But um, blue cheese, so we've talked a lot about names of cheeses. We love to talk about names of cheeses. Um, oftentimes, cheeses are named after their town, village, region. Um, oftentimes, they're named after their shape. Sometimes cheeses are named after their animal. So like, like Vage is an yeah. example of Vacherin for French cheeses. Chev means goat in French. Um, yes, that's right. But blue cheeses are, are called blue cheese because of their appearance. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah. They are the color blue. They're blue. And, and just to be or clear, green people will come in. A gorgonzola is, is a blue. Yes. So they all fall under the blue because mm -hmm. we'll often get people come in and say, I want a gorgonzola, mm -hmm. which is a blue. You can get gorgonzola yeah. or you can get shafts. They are the same category, same yeah. family. Yeah. Gorgonzola. You can, use, you can use all of them for cooking. Gorgonzola is a specific blue cheese from mm -hmm. a town called, or a commune called Gorgonzola in northern Italy. So that is a, it's always cow's milk. It has to be. So those things have to be true for it to be called a gorgonzola and that that falls under that italian system of protecting the names of, of their cheeses and there's mm -hmm. there's a few dozen of them just like there's a, a few dozen french cheeses that are protected roquefort is a blue cheese that's protected by the french system and has to yeah. come from a certain part like um, a certain yeah a certain region in southern france and it has to be sheep's milk so that's something to mm -hmm. to remember um roquefort is always sheep Gorgonzola always cow. There's one from England called Stilton. The three musketeers of cheese. Stilton is always cow's milk and it's from a place called, you guessed it, Stilton. Or just outside of Stilton. 
uh, but it's that's what the, the, the it's named for. Um, there's another one called Shropshire, and that's mm -hmm. from right next door to Stilton, and it's got a, um, a yellow color, so that's yeah. how you can kind of identify that one. And um, it's very similar to Stilton, and I know we had it in Del Mar this mm -hmm. week. Yes, yeah, good. We usually have it. Mm -hmm. But the mine shaft, what do we think? Shaft is good. I think people people are loving them. The blue is a favorite yeah. for many people. Danya's on. Oh, um, hey, Danya. She's our monger. Monger our extraordinaire. Monger. Love her. She's on. Loves the blue. Blue's the best. This is so funny. So Kelly, and I think I, I met you today, Kelly. I think you picked up your plate. I saw you today. Um, she likes the red better, the Sangiovese with the blue. Mm -hmm. And I fully expected to, but I also love the Pinot Grigio with it, which I didn't expect to. So it's surprising to me. Yeah. So that's really fun. But if everybody has a chance, what I really, really love <clears throat> is apricots with the blue. Yeah. So if you get a chance to put the two together, the dried apricot with the blue, I wish we could stuff these somehow we have stuffed peppers. Do you think we could stuff apricots with blue? Because it would be delicious. Well, Try thing, that if you get the chance, you guys. This is an awesome combination. One thing that we've mm -hmm. done before with a softer blue, mm -hmm. and that's another thing with blues. They can be hard. They can be soft. Mm -hmm. They can be goat. sort of, they, they can, can be, be goat, sheep, cow. Mm -hmm. They can come from anywhere in the world. Um, so it's a really a generic term of blue cheese. There, there's so many different types. But for a softer blue cheese, you can just shove it right into a pastry bag and yes. squeeze it onto an apricot, and that's a nice little... Oh, it's so good. Like, to me... Appetizer or d'oeuvre. Or d'oeuvre. Dessert. Yeah. To me, that apricot and a blue is a perfect dessert. And honey. Ooh, chocolate. Oh, we're going to have that too. <laughs> but honey too, before we jump to honey and blue. Yeah. Yeah. So t speaking of a little bit goes a long way or great desserts, I for some reason didn't know about this combo before I worked at Vinicius. No, no, no. I, I, didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know what chocolate was. No, blue Wait. cheese and honey. Right. If um, if you have a little bit of honey at home, go grab it now. Just put a little dab on the blue cheese or the. Go back to this. Yeah. Sephora del Piave. Do honey with that. You can't go wrong mm -hmm. with honey on any of them, but it Why? is even more mm -hmm. uh, extraordinary with, with, the, with blue the blue cheese, I feel like. And I think that's the honey with the cheese is so good because it's salt with sweet. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, just it's the oldest Ooh. trick in the book. The oldest, oldest trick in the book. You can wow things. your friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that's the same the reason yeah. why, why they do blue cheeses with those dessert wines. That, um, still, you think of Stilton and Port. Um, oh yeah, you know, Stilton and Port. Kind of mm -hmm. Syrupy, sweet. Um, you can even get really funky with it and do uh, like maple syrup or just whatever kind of weird stuff you have. Play around. Do it. <laughs> we got votes for blue and cranberry, uh -huh. which I haven't done yet. I'll try that next. Um, Tiffany loves the blue with the cranberry. But yeah, blue. I mean, same idea. If, yeah. Um, fig. Fi I mean, fig. Any jams are fig, great with it. Fig and chocolate, perhaps. Ooh. Well, everyone has different chocolate. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't. Even, I think we have a fig chocolate. Some people have that. Some people have other just, just chocolate. We just went crazy with the chocolate. Like we so, did. whatever you have, it's gonna be. It's good. It's gonna be good. But try the blue with it. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Right? See, I mean, okay. if it even if it even lasted. Um, no, it's probably gone. I think people have already eaten it. I and I love the chocolate with the Dreamweaver too. Um, so chocolate pairs really, really great with goat's milk cheeses, and that I think it I brings out weird. that kind of sweetness mm -hmm. and that sweet cream of the goat's milk. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you did get the chocolate with the fig, yum. Mm hmm. What do we but think? chocolate with the goat, I haven't done myself, honestly, uh -huh. now that you say. Sure. Oh, but yes, we did. Because goat yay toast truffles. Yeah. Did. You can fit, fill a truffle with goat cheese and chocolate. Eclipse it, did that for a while. That's yes, true. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another one I like for for chocolate, if you're uh, if you're into chocolate pairing with cheese, are um, the aged goat cheeses. So this is a, mm -hmm. of course a younger goat's goat's milk cheese, the Dreamweaver. But um, try a goat gouda, mm -hmm. uh, honeybee goat gouda, midnight moon are some uh, are some good ones that we usually have. But yeah. if we don't have those, try just ask for a goat gouda, goat gouda and pair it with a chocolate. It's Here's one. Blue with apples and honey. That's so... Oh. Danya, yes. Blue with apples and honey. Oh. Wait, that's no fair. Yeah, Don she kind of has an inside <laughs> track, but these are get she's giving you good tips. Um, Hold on. Danya, are you okay? I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's an inside joke. <laughs> okay. I don't even know that one. But uh, apples and honey with even the alp blossom, you guys, with apples and honey. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Blues with a goat. Yeah. Apples, honey with alpine. Anything with Sephora. Yeah. The truffle one needs to stand on its own. This is funny. I, I don't want to mix that one with anything. I was going to say... With, I don't know. You can. 
with certain uh, cheeses, if yeah. they're very dynamic, if there's a lot of stuff going on, they might they might just be best as a standalone. Yeah. And some of the truffles are, are like that. Yeah. Um, we have a truffle cheese called Boschetto. It's one of Gina's favorites. And it's white truffle as opposed to the black truffle, which is in this one. Boschetto is one that we usually have at all the shops. It's one of our staples. And um, we, it's so strong and it's so good as a standalone. But we tasted it one day with our red onion jam or confit and it was amazing oh my god so yeah. if you're looking for a fun funky mm -hmm. pairing to try someday yeah a red onion confit with a truffle boschetto it's random that it's seems weird. stupid that seems wrong it yeah. seems weird but yeah it was one that we just accidentally so good. discovered one day and truffles you guys again we were talking about the honey the truffle cheese oh, yeah. with honey oh, don't get me started well truffles and honey mm -hmm. and we also honey. we you can find truffle honey you can find truffle honey. Not in any of our stores because it's sold yeah. out, but you can find <laughs> truffle honey. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially during um, that time of year in the fall, there's all kinds of yeah. truffle products that, mm -hmm. that come out. But truffle honey is just mm -hmm. incredible if you if you yeah. like it. There's another uh, truffle cheese called Moliterno. Speaking of truffle cheese. Oh, that's intense. And it's a pecorino, oh. which means it's sheep's milk. It's from Sardinia. Um, but um, it's just one of those dry, oily, salty cheeses. And uh, that would be incredible with, uh, with honey as well. Yeah. Yeah. Rob, we have babbled about for an hour with we, you all. This is an hour? I'm so it's sorry. It's an hour, but it's so <laughs> fun. We have to seriously thank you yeah. for picking up the cheeses and again to Graze and the food hall for um, suggesting the wines and coming up with this. Um, I don't know what else to say. I hope you can see that it's, <laughs> it's entirely up to you, yeah. which you think is really great. I have, do have favorites, but none of them really like put me off. Which is good, because sometimes they do. Um, none of them did today. They were really good. Yeah, I, and again, I want to just echo what Gina said and just say thank you to everybody for joining us and supporting us in this still wacky time. And yeah, we're, and we're not going to say the C word because I'm done talking about <laughs> we're it. We're all in this together is yep. what we're going to mm -hmm. say. And we just we're appreciate all of you and especially the moms out there on yes, this special on day. Mother's day. I think there's a lot of moms that were joining in. Oh, Bluthens. Oh, oh, back to the beer. <laughs> okay, we'll go back to moms. Moms first. Moms, you. you get all your questions answered, moms. Moms, we hope you answers question. We didn't talk about the beer with the blue. Oh, yeah. Imperial Stout and yes. I, that's what I would have said. So my favorite thing with the blues is to go with a dark malty beer. So that's yeah. typically what we do. When good we, call, Margo. When we, good job, Margo. When we do the pairings, I would say the stouts are usually at the ends, at the end of the tasting, as, as are the blues. And uh, they very often go together. Um, so stouts, the kind of barrel aged, uh, um, the really, really high octane ones, just you're, you're looking for things to balance out. You're looking for them to um, be equal in strength. And uh, so yes, save them for the end. And, and by the way, that's more of a complimentary. Yeah, definitely complimentary. But even any stout, chocolate stout, yeah. they have an oatmeal stout, right? They're yeah. all good. And You're think right. about, yeah. we're talking about chocolate with blue cheese. So imagine that, you know, a chocolate stout with a blue. And wait, wait, what's going on over here? Nothing. <laughs> but uh, chocolate stout. Another mm -hmm. fun one I should I should say would on this on the stouts, we've done them with um, the softer goat cheeses one time. You did, and, and we it did. Worked. Well, we did a coffee stout with a really really soft creamy goat cheese, and it tasted like coffee and cream. That so that's a weird. fun. Pair. It's but it wasn't sounds gaming. weird, but it's fun. You it have fun. to experiment. Okay. That's how you find. That's how you find the home runs. Get go, stop with the safe. Pairings. Go That's with true. The Everybody knows stuff. the real, the yeah. usual ones. So got, just go, just get wild. So get soft crazy. goat with stout. Yeah, we did. We all just say which one we did. It was Humboldt Fog, yeah. and I don't remember what stout we used, but it was very, very good. It's so, a fun pairing. It's a fun pairing. So what we learned today, we have to do tequila tasting. We have to do people's oh. choice. Wait, what if people gave a suggestion and said, you have to try this with this and we'll see if it works. So and that's what I was, that was going to be what I was going to You took the words out of my mouth. Okay. I think we should have like a suggestion box and people should say maybe email like, oh. or something like just write in what you, what you want us to, to do for a pairing and, and we can. That would be good. Where, where should they good? email? I don't know. You can email me. Okay. What's that email? Ra okay. My email is <laughs> Rob, R-O-B at venissimo.com. Or email the website and it'll go to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> but yes, we would love um, 
what you would love to learn and have fun with because it's all about just having fun and experimenting like rob said yeah, yeah. and we and yeah. on that note we do uh we always we do private and corporate events too and we can uh, you think of it we can do it monger's favorite yeah. was a suggestion i wonder which monger um suggested that <laughs> Gee. Mm, who could that be? I love it, you guys. We're going to let you go. Thank you for your Thank hour you, of your time, for the cheeses. Hope you enjoy the bottles of wine. Drink up. Yeah. What else have we got to do? <laughs> um, and eat up. And wait, ciao. We're Italian tonight. Ciao. 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 Next Mwah. time. And stream.